G'day Internet and welcome back to another video. So in my last one on the TRS-80 Model 3, most of the comments seem to be about, ooh, didn't you know you could get sound out of a TRS-80? And how can you play Penetrator without the audio? Well, look, I know you can get sound out of a TRS-80, but it wasn't really the point of the video. But seeing as it's there, let's have a look at it this time round. I'm going to show you three different options for getting audio out of the TRS-80 Model 3. One's really simple, one's pretty simple, and the other one is, well, it's a lot more complicated. But hopefully it'll turn out. So for the very first one, all you simply need is the cassette cable from a TRS-80 or a Coco. It's the standard 5-pin DIN at one end and the three audio, mono audio plugs at the other end. And you simply plug this into the back of the TRS-80, the microphone plug into some kind of audio speakers or something along those lines, and off you go. But a 3.5mm mono jack isn't really that useful anymore. So let's take a look at a second option which will make it, well, a little better. So for this one, all we're going to do is we're going to take a standard 5-pin 180 degree DIN plug, which is the same that's on the cassette cable, uh, and wire in a couple of female uh, RCA jacks that I'm just going to pinch off this double adapter thing. And they're simply going to wire to this, um, just so you're aware, on the l my left hand side here is uh, negative and on the far one is the audio signal and it's as simple as that. So let's get started. So I just double check this and the pins we actually want is the center pin here and this pin right there. So the middle, down this side, the middle one. Uh, negative is at the top and the audio signal is the other one. Okay, they are soldered in. That all looks okay. Let me check it with a multimeter. This should be audio signal, which is here. Yep, that should be Earth. Yep. This also should be Signal. Yes. That should be Earth. Come on. Hmm? That's better, All right. And now, which is probably my least favorite part, is actually putting these together. I'm sure there's a knack or a proper way to do it that I don't know or understand, but it just never seems to work for me. All right, so try and keep that as square as possible. Small pair of pliers. Pinch that down. Put the cap on it. that this slides up and in theory goes click and we have an audio lead so let's try it out and all we need to do now is this 
plugs into the back here into the cassette port and then all I need to do is plug in my speakers and that's it it should be ready to rock and roll and without further ado And we have sound. So for the third option, it's going to be a little bit more involved. So the audio that comes out of the um, cassette jack on a Tower S80 is essentially line level. So it needs amplification. So whatever speakers you use for the little top and tail uh, thing that we built, uh, is they're gonna have to be amplified speakers. But what if we had an amplifier in the machine? So I was down at JCAR and I picked up their little Champ Audio Amplifier Kit. Now I haven't built anything like this since I was a child, but how complicated can it really be? Okay, so let's get rid of that. We have a packet of uh, parts. We have a wee little PS, uh, PCB. And we have some destructions, um, whoa, which I just tore. Which, interestingly enough, don't actually have any instructions. I'm guessing you just make it up as you go along. Well, the PCB is fairly well laid out. So, uh, all right, let's just see how we go. Okay, so we have uh, some wire, I don't want that. We have a little bit of solder, I don't want that. Uh, we have the volume control, which is this little uh, pot. Uh, I'm not gonna put that on just yet. I'm gonna see if I can come up with a different solution, but that may end up on there. Uh, we have what I'm guessing is some kind of small rectifier or something along those lines. Uh, a couple of resistors. Uh, a handful of capacitors, the actual amplifier chip, and a PCB. Uh, okay, let's see how we go. I think I'm gonna start with the socket for the PCB. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, what next? I think... Alright, so we have a 1K and a 10R resistor. Which is which? Okay, the one with gold is the 10. So, let's put this in here. And the other one is the 1K. Now if we zoom in, one thing that is a little odd, they seem to have marked the positive side of the capacitors. Eh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just a little strange. Most PCBs I see have um, uh, the negative marked. Anyway, so I've got a 10UF, a 10UF, uh, a hundred and 
220. So working from the top here, that's the 100. And of course, we all know that the stripe means negative. So that goes this way. Flip it over. Next is one of the tens. Am I the only one who hates this masking tape stuff they use on capacitors? It always makes the legs a mess as well. Okay, so you go in like so. And if we take our little amplifier and slot him in, oops, let's straighten out the pins a bit. Slot that guy in there. Oh, come on. It went in at a funny angle. Right. And with the exception of adding input speakers and power, which I'm going to do with wires instead of the pins that are supplied, that's pretty much it. So to install the amplifier in a speaker, we are going to have to obviously pull the machine apart. So give me a moment to put it back into standard servicing position and we will go from there. And this here is the internals of a TRS-80 Model 3. Now, with the uh, amplifier, I did originally uh, leave off a uh, potentiometer for the volume control because I did have ideas of running a dial somewhere, but it's not really going to work. So what I've done is I've put the little pot back in, and we're actually going to mount it kind of here. And the upshot of that is you'll be able to access the volume control through one of the little vents that are in the bottom here. So with a bit of heavy duty double sided sticky tape, I think that will work quite well. And this is a little bit here I was talking about. So if we line up the center of the volume control and above one of the slots, actually I'll do it to the front one because it'll make more sense, and stick that in there. There we go, there's our amplifier. So what we need now is speaker, input, and power. So for power, it's really simple. This particular little amplifier will take anywhere from four to 12 volts. Now, I don't want it stupidly loud, so I'm gonna be plugging it into the five volt rail, uh, and there actually happens to be a spare output on the secondary power supply just here. 
And that there may look familiar because it actually takes a, the same power connector as a 3.5 inch floppy disk. So all I've done is wired it into the back of that. And that just simply goes on here. And there's our power. And for the audio input to the amplifier, all we want to do is come off the back of the cassette port. Like that. Now, as for the speaker, this little amp here will only do a little 8 ohm 0.25 watt speaker. Um, so depending on what amp you get depends on what kind of speaker you want to put in. Um, but for now all I've done is I've put this little guy and I've mounted it on some standoffs and it simply sits under the keyboard. It's time to put the whole thing back together and I'll take a few moments to tune the volume um, and then we'll test it out. Well it's all back together so let's see how this sounds. Actually sounds pretty good. Volume's just right for me. Still terrible at this game, 40 years later. So there's three ways of getting audio out of your Model 3. So what do I think of the three options? Well, using just the cassette cable is fine, but like I said, the 3.5 millimeter um, mono jack can be a bit of a pain plugging it into various things. Um, the cable that I made is easily the simplest um, and if you've got a set of uh, stereo speakers or an amp or something like that it's really simple to hook up to. Now with that one another option would be to simply hook it up to a 3.5 millimeter uh, socket so then you could plug a normal set of computer speakers in it that would also work. Um, the internal amp is it's a cool idea um, and I'm glad I did it. I do like the, uh, the idea that it's all kind of encased within the computer. Um, being able to find a better way for an external volume control would have been nice, but with this machine I've generally found that once it's kind of the volume's tuned in, then I'm happy with it and it's right to go. And I still can access it from the bottom. Um, the little pissant speaker that I used isn't the most fantastic. You may have heard uh, in the crash sound in Penetrator, it was a bit kind of, I don't know, there's probably, a, it was distorted, that's the word I was looking for. So if you were to do it, maybe look at a better amp and a better speaker, something with a bit more grunt, that mightn't be a bad idea. But either way, the TRS-80 now has a voice, um, and it's ready to play some games with sound now. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'd like to send another big thumbs up to uh, Ian Maverick for the Fred HD, uh, well the Fred, um, it's made life with this machine so much easier. Um, so if you do have a TRS-80, if, if, if you can justify uh, spending the money, I highly recommend it. Um, but for now, that's it. If you like the video, uh, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.